Hello everyone, my name is Reza Baserinia and I would like to welcome everyone to today's webinar session. The title of the presentation is From Powder Flowability to Mechanical Performance of Fabricated Components. In this project, which was carried out in collaboration with Freeman Technology and Macromeritics, we explored the relationships uh, between dynamic powder flow measures and the mechanical performance of parts uh, fabricated using selective laser sintering and we try to uh, correlate these together. Here is the outline of the presentation today. I'm going to start by providing a short background about who I am and what I do. Uh, I will then uh, present the introduction to the project followed by the motivations and aims of the research that was carried out. Next, I will present the materials used in this study and the experimental procedures followed. We are going to then look at the experimental results obtained followed by uh, the summary of key findings and outcomes of the research project. So I completed my MSc and bachelor degrees in mechanical engineering. I then completed my PhD at the University of Leicester under the supervision of Professor Chaba Sinka. The title of my thesis is Flow of Fine and Cohesive Powders under Controlled Air Pressure Conditions and the main aim of the project was to investigate the influence of material properties and processing parameters on powder flowability, with special focus on the influence of air pressure conditions. After completing my PhD degree, I joined De Montfort University as lecturer in engineering design in 2017. Since September 2018, I've been working as a senior lecturer. And my main research interests are powder flow characterization, powder flowability in pharmaceutical manufacturing, and also additive manufacturing, uh, especially powder bed fusion techniques. This figure presents a schematic diagram of powder bed fusion processes. In these systems, the process starts by increasing the temperature of the chamber close to the melting temperature of the material in order to reduce the residual stresses in the process. Using a roller or a blade, a layer of powder is transferred from the feed bin to the print bin. The laser then sinters the particles based on a predefined pattern generated using the CAT software. Once one layer is centered, the second layer of powder is deposited on top of the first one using the roller, and this process is repeated until the entire volume of the part is fabricated. In powder bed fusion processes, such as uh, selective laser sintering, Final mechanical properties of the fabricated components are directly influenced by the uniformity of the powder bed uh, deposited on the print bed before uh, the laser sinters the particles together. Now, if you have a powder bed with large porosity, that porosity can reduce the mechanical uh, behavior of the parts that are manufactured or if we have uh, parts of the bed as a denser packed parts and part of it less dense uh, then we would have inconsistent mechanical behavior therefore it is really important to be able to uh, form a uniform powder bed and transfer the particles from the feed bin onto the uh, print bin uniformly before the laser sinters the particles together. Now the particle transfer from the feed bin to the print bin is directly influenced by uh, the flowability of the powders and uh, there are a number of parameters that are affecting powder flowability. These parameters can be uh, divided into main categories of uh, physical characteristics and also the environmental conditions. Uh, 
physical characteristics include the particle size, particle size distribution, shape of the particles and density of the powder. And uh, in terms of environmental conditions, we have the temperature, humidity and electrostatic charging of the particles. And all of these parameters can have an effect on how the powder flows uh, from the feed bin to the print bin. So the applications of uh, powder-based additive manufacturing techniques are expanding into uh, many industries. Uh, originally, these methods were developed for polymers and metal powders, uh, but now we can see that the applications are expanding into the food industry, into pharmaceutical industry, and uh, we see that new materials and new formulations are uh, being developed specifically for uh, additive manufacturing uh, purposes. Now, if we want to uh, do trial and, trial and testing uh, to evaluate the performance of the parts that are manufactured using these methods, uh, we require a large quantity of materials and we also need to spend uh, a, a large amount of time for uh, trial and testing and this would be very uh, expensive because generally uh, powdered materials are expensive and also additive manufacturing using powders are time consuming processes which again will be translated into costs. So this is not really a, a cost effective route for assessing the performance of uh, final parts. And this brings us to the main uh, motivation and aim of the research that was uh, carried out. So if we can understand how uh, different powder properties influence the powder flowability and if we can establish some relationships between the flowability of the material and the mechanical performance of the part that is uh, fabricated from the material using the additive manufacturing method, uh, we would be able to estimate the performance of the uh, component prior to fabrication. So uh, when, when we have a uh, formulation we would be able to carry out some tests on the powder and that can indicate what the uh, final mechanical properties would be so now the main aim of the project was uh, to correlate the flowability of powders used in additive manufacturing uh, to the mechanical performance of uh, fabricated parts in this study we used two main uh, powders so these were uh, two different grades of uh, polyamide 12 or nylon 12 powder the material was manufactured by uh, Sintrit in Poland uh, the first grade is called PA12 smooth uh, print ready uh, in this research we are going to refer to it as uh, PR and the second grade is PA12 smooth uh, fresh. Now the print ready grade uh, is the grade recommended for uh, recommended by the manufacturer as a grade that's ready to be used inside of the uh, the machine. Um, after one set of uh, 3D printing has been done using the print ready powder, uh, it, the manufacturer recommends to uh, recycle the, the powder that has been used and add 30% uh, volume of uh, the fresh grade to the recycled PR grade in order to uh, reuse the material uh, for further uh, 3D printing work to be carried out. And uh, according to the information provided by the manufacturer, the uh, physical characteristics of uh, the two grades are very similar uh, to each other so they have very similar particle size range and also they have a very similar particle shape and the difference between the two grades is uh, is the shrinking ratio uh, uh, between the two and the fresh grade has a slightly smaller shrinking uh, ratio compared to the uh, print ready grade um, so the manufacturer recommends a, a 70 print ready and 30% uh, 
uh, fresh uh, grade mixture for reusing the powder. However, in this study, we wanted to assess the performance of some uh, custom blends created by mixing different ratios of these two grades. And we wanted to assess how uh, the flowability would be uh, affected and how the mechanical performance of the final uh, components will be affected if we mix different ratios of uh, these two grades with each other. So according to this, um, we made five custom blends according to the ratios that are summarized in the table. So the first blend is 100% PR uh, grade. The second blend is 70% PR, 30% fresh, which is the ratio recommended by the manufacturer. The third grade is 50-50 uh, ratio between the two grades. Uh, the fourth grade is 30% PR and 70% fresh and the final blend is 100% uh, fresh grade. The particle size distribution of the PR and fresh grades were determined using a particle inside dynamic image analyzer and it was observed that both of the uh, powders had a similar uh, particle size distribution curves with majority of, majority of the particles between 20 and 100 microns and uh, average particle size very close to uh, 40 microns and also both grades had uh, some dust present in the batch that was received from uh, the manufacturer and the dust had uh, particle sizes of smaller than uh, 2 microns. The scanning electron microscopy images of the two grades were captured using an SEM microscope at 350 and 5000 uh, magnifications. Uh, it was observed that the general shape and uh, uh, overall morphology of the particles were uh, very similar to each other. Uh, the only difference between uh, fresh and PR grades uh, was that uh, on the surface of uh, PR grade particles, uh, there were plenty of nano sized small features compared to particles from uh, the fresh grade, which were uh, more uh, smoother on the surface. Uh, after uh, the SEM images were captured, the flowability of the powders and bulk powder behavior uh, was measured using an FT4 powder rheometer. The parameters measured included the condition bulk density, which was the density of the uh, powder determined after the sample inside the vessel of the FD4 rheometer was uh, conditioned and uh, based on the volume of the uh, vessel and the mass of the uh, sample, the, the density was determined. Uh, we also measured the basic flow energy. So the flow energy is the energy required for the uh, FT4 blade to tra traverse downward uh, inside the vessel. And in the standard procedure of uh, FT4 rheometer, uh, the flow energy is measured seven times and the energy of the seventh uh, cycle is called the basic flow energy. We also measured the compressibility and pressure drop across the powder bed at a different compaction uh, pressures. So the normal pressure uh, applied to the samples were increased from uh, 1 kilopascal to a maximum of, maximum of 15 kilopascal and at different intervals uh, the compressibility was calculated based on the initial volume of the sample and the final volume at the designated pressure and the pressure drop was uh, measured by allowing air to pass through the sample through opening at the bottom of the sample while the phase velocity was kept at uh, 2 millimeters per second. We also measured the aeration ratio at the phase velocity of uh, 2.5 millimeters per second. Uh, the full procedure of the experiments carried out uh, are discussed in the reference uh, cited on the slide. After uh, characterizing the flowability of the powders using the FD4 powder rheometer, uh, 
uh, each blend was used to uh, 3D print and fabricate a number of samples. So in total, three uh, geometries were fabricated. Uh, the first geometry was used uh, uh, for volume and density measurement. The second geometry was used for tensile testing and the third geometry was used for uh, measuring the surface hardness of fabricated components. And these components were fabricated using a Sintrit Laser SLS 3D printer uh, with processing parameters of uh, 0 0.125 mm layer height. Power ratio was set to 1. Uh, the bed temperature offset was kept at 0 Celsius and the temperature of the chamber was increased uh, to 180 degrees C before uh, sintering initiated. Now, uh, for volume and density measurements, the samples were in the form of a cube. So in total, uh, we fabricated uh, nine uh, 20 millimeter sided cubes. Uh, these samples were then placed inside of a gas displacement uh, pycnometer to determine the volume of the samples. Uh, the volume measurement for each sample was repeated 10 times and average to uh, calculate the volume of each sample and then for each blend uh, the volumes of nine samples calculated were average to determine uh, the average volume for each blend. Using the average mass of the specimen the density was also uh, calculated. For tensile testing we fabricated five specimens uh, with type 4 geometry specified in ASDM D638-03 standard. After fabrication, the specimens were tested using an Instron 3360 tensile testing machine under constant displacement rate of 50 mm per minute until failure of the samples. Uh, for calculation purposes, before the testing was carried out, the thickness and width of each specimen was determined in the middle and within 5 uh, mm of the two ends of the gauge length. For each blend, the average values of the maximum tensile strength, maximum tensile strain and also uh, tensile strength and strain at failure uh, was determined. For measuring the surface hardness, uh, cuboids with geometry of 100 by 20 by 6 millimeters were fabricated uh, using the SLS 3D printer and the hardness testing was carried out based on the ASDM D785-03 standard using a quarter of an inch indenter and we measured the HRL hardness 10 times for each sample and the average hardness of for each uh, blend sample was then uh, calculated. Now that we discussed the procedures followed in this project, we can now look at the results that were obtained. Uh, this table summarizes the results for conditioned bulk density, basic flow energy and aeration ratio measurements. Based on conditioned bulk density values, it can be seen that when the portion of fresh grade available in the blend increases, the conditioned bulk density also increases. This suggests that uh, the porosity reduces when we have larger portion of fresh available in the blend. Uh, a similar observation was also observed for basic flow energy, whereby the values increased with increasing ratio of the fresh grade. Now interpreting the results of basic flow energy cannot be done uh, alone and it has to be done with respect to the condition bulk density values that were obtained. When you have a cohesive powder typically larger values of basic flow energy is obtained. If we only rely on the values of basic flow energy we might conclude that the fresh grade is more cohesive than the PR grade. However, uh, that is not the case and uh, when you have a really good flowing powder, since the particles rearrange nicely and sit nicely together, the porosity is smaller and it will be more difficult for the blade uh, to traverse downward and results in higher basic flow energy and uh, 
uh, if we take into account the condition bulk density values, it can be seen that indeed by increasing the portion of fresh grade inside of the blend, the flowability of the powder is increased resulting in higher condition bulk density and higher basic flow energy values. This also uh, is in line with the aeration ratio values measured and it can be seen that when the uh, ratio of the fresh grade is increased uh, the ability of the powder blend to fluidize is also increased and the aeration ratio values are also uh, larger. Now, according to these results, we can conclude that addition of fresh grade into the blend results in improvement in the flowability of the powder and uh, we obtain tighter packing density. The results obtained for pressure drop across the powder sample and compressibility percentage at changing applied normal stress are summarized in this slide. It is observed that at the lowest applied normal stress, the pressure drop measured for powders with larger ratio of print ready is smaller. For these powders, as the condition bulk density values suggest, the porosity within the powder bed is larger, meaning it is easier for air to pass through the powder sample resulting in smaller pressure drop and when the level of fresh grade inside of the powder blend is increased the, it would be more difficult for air to pass through resulting in higher pressure drop. When the applied normal stress increases the particles start to rearrange within the powder bed filling the interparticle gaps making it more difficult for air to pass through. So we can see that for all five blends, uh, when the normal stress is increased, we recorded uh, larger values for the pressure drop across the powder sample. In terms of compressibility percentage, when the blend has higher level of uh, print ready grade, since the porosity within the powder bed is larger, under normal stress, the ability of the particles to rearrange is larger, resulting in higher changes in the volume of the powder sample and therefore the compressibility percentage values would be larger for these blends. And when the level of fresh increases, the compressibility percentage drops. Uh, when the applied normal stress increase, we see larger change in the volume and therefore compressibility percentage across all five blends uh, increases. Now the extent of changes in the pressure drop and compressibility percentage for the five blends are not similar. It is observed that for powders with larger level of print ready, we have a larger change in the value of pressure drop and compressibility percentage compared to those blends with higher levels of uh, fresh. This is again due to the fact that when the level of fresh grade inside of the blend is larger, the initial packing of the particles is tighter, therefore the ability of the particles to rearrange and move within the powder bed is reduced. So when normal stress is applied, we see smaller changes in pressure drop and compressibility percentage for these blends. The results obtained for the pressure drop and compressibility percentage at a maximum normal stress of 15 kilopascals is presented in, in this figure. To summarize, for powders with print ready as the dominant grade, uh, we have smaller pressure drop and higher compressibility percentage. And when the level of fresh grade in the blend increases, uh, the pressure drop recorded is increased and the compressibility percentage is uh, reduced. And we discussed that uh, these are uh, due to the changes in the level of porosity that we have in uh, the powder blend. When we characterize the two grades of polyamide 12, we observe that both 
the print ready and fresh grades have a very similar particle size distribution profiles and based on the SEM images the overall shape of the particles are also similar however as discussed earlier there are a large number of nano sized features on the surface of print ready particles and these features result in higher particle interlocking therefore when the FD4 vessel is filled the porosity of the powder bed will be larger and therefore the pressure drop will be smaller and the compressibility percentage will be larger. When fresh is the dominant grade in the blend, the particle interlocking is uh, reduced and we have smaller uh, porosity in the powder bed. After characterizing the flowability and bulk properties of powder blends using the FT4 powder rheometer, Samples were fabricated using the SLS 3D printer uh, to measure the geometry of the samples and uh, assess the mechanical performance of fabricated parts. We can start by uh, discussing uh, the volume and density measurements. The samples fabricated for volume measurements were 20 mm sided cubes. Therefore, the target volume was 8 cubic centimeters. For PR and PR70 blends, the volume of the fabricated samples um, was very close to the target volume of 8. However, when the level of fresh in the blend started to increase, the volume of fabricated samples increased with the level of fresh whereby for 100 percent fresh the volume of the sample was almost 25 percent larger than the target volume geometrical inaccuracy is a known issue in additive manufacturing however if this was the only underlying cause here we should have observed the same levels of inaccuracy across different blends while here uh, for PR and PR70 the volume is very close to the target volume while for PR30 and fresh uh, we, we see significantly larger volumes of the samples when fresh is the dominant grade in the blend we have tighter particle packing in the print bed Therefore, the conductive heat transfer between the particle is facilitated and when the laser centers the particle according to the predefined path, a larger number of particles are heated up and binded together. Therefore, the final volume of the sample would become larger. The second reason for this observation is that the fresh grade has smaller shrinking ratio than uh, the print ready grade. So the samples fabricated from the blends where uh, the fresh grade is dominant will have smaller changes in the volume when the samples are cooled down after fabrication. This also explains why the densities measured across the different blends are very similar to each other. Although when fresh is the dominant grade, we have tighter particle packing and we should expect larger density since the volume of the samples are larger, uh, this cancels the effect of packing density and the final density of samples fabricated are very close to each other. Looking at the results obtained from tensile testing, we can see that the mechanical performance of fabricated samples is improved with powder flowability. Based on the dynamic flow measurements carried out using the FT4 powder rheometer, we observed that the powder flowability is improved when the level of fresh in the blend is increased. And here we can see that uh, for samples fabricated from blends with higher levels of fresh, the maximum tensile strength and the tensile stress at the breakpoint 
is larger. The improvement in the mechanical performance is associated with tighter particle packing. When we have tighter particle packing, there are a larger number of particles binded together after sintering, resulting in higher overall bond in the sample and improved mechanical performance. When the results were compared in terms of the tensile strain, similar observations were made. Comparing the results obtained for surface hardness measurements showed uh, similar results. Uh, so for powders uh, with better flowability, uh, the hardness values measured on the samples fabricated from those powders was uh, larger. However, uh, the improvement in the hardness of the samples fabricated was uh, significantly larger compared to the improvements observed in uh, the tensile behavior of the specimen. For example, it was observed that for uh, the sample fabricated from the fresh blend, the hardness values were four times larger than the hardness values obtained for the sample uh, fabricated from PR. Plotting the basic flow energies uh, determined for the five blends against the tensile strength and Rockwell hardness values uh, measured for samples fabricated from the blends show linear correlations. Therefore, the basic flow energy can be used to estimate the mechanical performance of parts fabricated from the blends, and this will uh, enable us to uh, design our powder according to the performance required and avoid uh, trial and testing. Now, uh, for newly developed materials, we can also do comparative studies and uh, measure the basic flow energy of newly developed grades to compare them against each other and get an understanding of how they would behave after fabrication. However, it must be noted that although improving the flowability of the powder can result in tighter packing density and improved mechanical performance of fabricated parts, uh, the geometry of the samples fabricated will be uh, adversely affected and in the design stage this needs to be considered and the cat fall needs to be adjusted based on powder flowability in order to obtain parts with uh, geometries close to the intended size. To summarize, we observed that the poor powder flowability is associated with uh, the large number of small uh, features existing on the surface of uh, print-ready particles. And uh, we showed that uh, for powders with tighter packing density, uh, stronger bonds was formed between the particles and the mechanical performance of uh, parts uh, was improved. However, for powders with improved flowability and tighter packing density, the geometrical accuracy was reduced. Uh, dynamic flow properties can be used to predict the mechanical properties of parts and also we can generate material specific charts to correlate the flow measures to mechanical performance uh, which can then assist us in the design stage to tailor our powder according to the mechanical performance needed. This brings us to the end of this presentation. I would like to take this opportunity to thank Rajiv and Katrina for their collaborations in this project. I would like to also thank the Montford University for funding this research work and Micrometrics and Freeman Technology for providing uh, the opportunity to me to uh, present at this uh, webinar. Uh, you can find my contact detail on this slide. Uh, thank you very much for uh, listening to me and I welcome any questions uh, you might have. Thank you.